I get a lot of weekly reminders that I am living the dream, as they say, and I'm really trying to pepper this kind of message into my videos. You know, people say all the time, I wish I could do what you do. And my response is 100% of the time, you can. It's whether or not you will. Welcome to the Go Hunt Life Show, hosted by Todd Nevins. This is Todd Nevins, and I explore stories about people that had seemingly normal lives and careers going, but they pulled the ripcord and blew up their comfort bubbles to hunt down their life that they had always dreamed of living. On the show today, I speak with Robert Field. Three years ago, he was doing everything that society had told him would bring him happiness. He had earned a master's degree that enabled him to get a great job in finance, making plenty of money, and everything on paper was just fine. When all of a sudden, he had a really tragic four days, and everything in his life, his beliefs around happiness, and his direction changed. These experiences catapulted him into following his passion with a vengeance, and that passion is kayak fishing and making YouTube videos about his adventures. Now, three years later, Robert is a marketing influencer and YouTube star with nearly 100,000 subscribers to his channel, 37,000 followers on Instagram, and the big one, sponsorships. We go through his evolution into his new profession and that moment during his journey when he absolutely knew that he was on the right path. And that moment was brought to him by a 10-year-old girl and an emotional call from her mom. Thank you to previous guest Mark Vlaskamp for introducing me to Robert. Mark also has a story from corporate grind to kayak fishing, and you can check it out on episode number 79. If you or you know of someone that pulled the ripcord and completely reinvented their life, I'd love to know about it. You can reach me at GoHuntLife.com. I interviewed Robert from a concrete conference room at uh, Tercer Piso co-working space in downtown Guanajuato, Mexico. So any echo chamber noise is on me. And with that, a shout out to my editing crew uh, at Castle Media Group in Austin. Thank you guys. And now my conversation with Robert Field is coming up next. This episode is sponsored by PrintDirtCheap.com. Jeff Chrisman, the founder of Print Dirt Cheap, started his business the way most companies begin, with grit, determination, and a vision. And now, a decade later, he's built his company into an online printing powerhouse. If I've handed you a business card in the last four years, it was printed by Print Dirt Cheap. And the decals all over my laptop, they printed those too. They print and ship over 30 categories of printing products from business cards and decals to banners, company letterhead, restaurant menus, and a ton of direct mail pieces. And they have just rolled out an entirely new website ensuring that your online user experience to place an order is simple and fast. And when you place that order, use promo code LIFEHUNTER for $10 off. And Jeff has just launched Success Hackers, which is a global group of tenacious entrepreneurs that share the latest tips, tools, and hacks into growing a business. Check it out at facebook.com forward slash success hackers. Robert, thank you for jumping on the show today. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Where are you located in the world? And if you were to walk outside, describe what you would see. So right now I am in Laurel, Delaware. Or Yanny, I guess, depending on, on who you ask. And uh, if I were to walk outside right now, I would be looking at a tomato farm, actually. A tomato farm. I would have expected you to be in a park or, or somewhere like that, not a tomato farm. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, so as you know, I'm sure we'll get into it, but I, you know, I live in the camper full time. And uh, there's a website called Boondockers Welcome where people will open up their property for RVers to come through and, and stay for a few days or a week for free. And so I, I met this couple on there, found them on there, and they kind of live in the middle of the farmlands here in here in Delaware. So here I am. Nice. Nice. How old are you? Are you married and do you have kids? I am 30 years old, not married and no kids. I'm a free man. And what is your profession and primary ways that you make money? So my profession, most people kind of from the outside looking in would call me a professional angler, professional fisherman. That is not entirely accurate. I don't really get paid to catch fish. Um, I consider myself a professional videographer in the in the kind of fishing space. And 
I make my money from a variety of, of places. Kind of, I kind of diversify in that regard, but um, everything from YouTube revenue to sponsor dollars to kind of one-off paid uh, video projects, commercials, things like that. And you've got 96,000 subscribers to your YouTube channel and you've got 37,000 followers on Instagram. So you 100% qualify as an influencer in your space. So we are going to get there eventually. But first, I want to go back in time three to four years ago, you were not doing this professionally. You had a normal nine to five life. What were you doing and where were you living? Yeah. So I was, uh, I was living in Dallas, Texas. Um, it's where I spent most of my life after starting when I was about 10. And I, let's see, three, four years ago, I had just gotten my master's degree in finance. I was working for a financial advisory firm um, basically I, I was under the impression that money is what made you happy. And so I was taking the steps to make as much of it as I can and, um, feel fortunate that at a young age, I kind of learned that, uh, money does not make you happy. So you quit your, all right. So you had a normal finance job. You obviously spent the time and the money to get a master's degree in finance. So you had that commitment, like that level of commitment, like, gosh, I've spent all this time and money to do this. I just need to do this and make money. Like, how did you get to the point of like, it, it's, it's not all about making money. Yeah, that's, uh, that's tough. You know, it definitely, you know, there's kind of this sunk cost concept where, uh, you're absolutely right. You know, I had just spent all this money, all this time, all this effort and energy getting my master's in finance and, you know, kind of during that process, even before I finished, I kind of started to realize like, God, I don't think I want to do this the rest of my life. Like, uh, I just, the passion wasn't there. Um, but at the same time, you know, it, it like every thing that society tells you is that, you know, that's the, the road to happiness, you know, finish high school, go to college, go to more college, find a wife, buy a house, you know, and then when you're 65, you can do all the things that you love. And, um, I just kind of became disenchanted with the whole thing. Um, while I was getting my master's, I was, um, taking classes at night. I was working eight to five, uh, Monday through Friday. And then uh, I had started to kind of dabble in some, some fishing videos and the, uh, little bit of spare time that I had, but yeah, I don't know, man. I just, uh, started realizing like, dude, this is forever. I don't think I want this to be forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you transition. I've interviewed some people that, that reach that, man, I don't want to do this forever. Pull the rip cord and completely like pull, rip the bandaid off. You did something really smart. I think that you transitioned a little bit into where you are now. You went to a startup that was in the, in the fishing industry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I found an opportunity. Again, I'd been dabbling in the videos and kind of started to, you know, make a name for myself, at least in kayak fishing, which is a, a relatively small sport and it was new and, and blowing up at the time. But um, so I'd made some contacts, generated a little bit of, I guess, you know, notoriety. And uh, yeah, I was presented with an opportunity to come on board with a startup fishing rod company. Uh, they had a patented system that I thought would kind of differentiate them. And so he wanted me to bring me on board to do marketing and finance and, and sale, really, I guess a little bit of everything like most startups um, go. But yeah, I had just got my master's. And I mean, for me at that point, really, it was more so, you know, why don't I just give this a shot? Um, you know, I wasn't happy in the in the corporate world wearing a suit every day and thought, you know, maybe this would be a way to, to make a bunch of money real fast and then I can go do what I love and not have to sit in an office every day. That was the plan. Ah, that was still the concept. Jump into a startup, make a bunch of money, exit out, and you're in your space that you're passionate about. So you're kind of, you got both bases covered, so to speak. It, what didn't, what transitioned into you completely leaving the startup world and going out on your own as a full-time YouTuber, a uh, professional, yeah, you're not a professional language. You said you're a professional videographer. Like what was that transition? Yeah, man. So actually that transition was pretty, pretty rough and pretty abrupt. So, um, I was with the, the startup fishing rock company for about 16 months or so. And, you know, as most startups, we had, you know, high hopes that we were just going to make a million dollars in the first week and everyone on the planet was going to be using our rods. And, you know, that wasn't the case. And, 
we had struggles like all startups had. And uh, after a while, I kind of started to realize that, that my partner in the business, the owner and the inventor was really just not, um, I guess, the kind of guy that I wanted to be that tied that closely to. There were some kind of moral dilemmas going on. And beyond that, we weren't making any money. And um, uh, probably in the most challenging week of my life, I uh, uh, they fired me from the, the startup fishing rod company. Um, somewhat unexpectedly, we weren't making money. I knew they really didn't have money to pay me. And so I guess I kind of saw it coming. But um, they fired me uh, kind of out of the blue. And then about a day later, my girlfriend and I broke up uh, that I was living with. So I had to kind of I got kind of the oust and had to get out of there um, basically that day, which was obviously stressful. And then about two days after that, my uh, my uncle walked to a park and, and shot himself in the head. And uh, he was kind of one of my closer relatives. And so all that kind of happened, at, you know, in, in literally like a four day span. And I found myself, you know, kind of depressed and feeling sorry for myself. I, you know, started drinking a bunch for, for about a week and, um, Luckily, uh, and I think maybe we'll touch on this in a minute, but uh, I went and spent some time with a friend and he kind of helped shift my perspective on, on what had happened and what was happening and, you know, helped me realize that, you know, now all of a sudden I was single, unemployed, kind of had this newfound perspective and, and appreciation for life and how short it is and all that kind of catalyzed me to just make the decision, you know, it like let's go for it how much money did you have at that point and and what did you need to do to prepare to strike out on your own with a couple of kayaks and a you know and and a trailer <laughs> yeah so uh i mean i didn't even have the trailer concept really wasn't even in the works yet um i had uh i would say approximately no money um savings was limited to like what was in my 401k um didn't, I was, I was not very good. Again, you know, I just got my master's in finance. I knew I was about to be making a bunch of money. And, um, so saving didn't seem like it needed to be a priority. So yeah, the first thing I needed was to figure out how the hell am I going to make a living doing this kayak fishing thing? Cause at that point I had made very little money off of the kayak fishing videos, uh, pretty close to no money. <laughs> your, your buddy that was helping you through that, that sounds I mean, that, that week, it sounds like an unbelievably, I mean, tragic, terrible, life-altering, life-shifting, and it sounds like that's exactly what did happen. But what, what, did your, what did your buddy say to you that kind of calmed you down and centered you into focusing in in this direction? Was there something specific that you can point to? Um, I'm not sure. His name's, his name's Rex de Guzman, Rex Del Rey. Um, he's been a good, good friend of mine that I met in kayak fishing. Uh, and you know, I don't know, he's just really kind of a, a philosophical sort of dude. And, um, you know, he invited me down, he kind of lives out in the woods down near Houston, Texas. And he invited me down and we just kind of hung out. And honestly, it's going to sound, sounds silly, but I mean, we sat around and watched like some, some inspirational kind of motivational videos, um, that had some good messaging and we just talked you know, through life. And, and he just kind of pointed out to me that, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry all this happened, but here's another way to look at it. You know, you've been toying with and hinting at the idea of, of striking out on your own. And it sure seems like the universe just kind of freed you up to go for it. And, uh, it was just kind of like a light bulb went off, you know, it really does sound like you finally, you got permission you had been dabbling in this for a number of years, but you finally got permission to do it full steam. Um, when you left his property, what was your what was your plan, and what did you do? <laughs> oh, plan plan's a strong word. I uh, <laughs> I went back. Um, I actually called my parents. Um, called my dad. He's a uh, you know really successful businessman in the corporate world, and and kind of told him you know, it was his brother actually that, that killed himself. And so we talked, talked about that. And, and I told him, you know, dad, I know it's going to sound crazy, but I want to, I want to try to make this kayak fishing thing, my job. I want to try to support myself doing this. And, um, I, I'm very fortunate. He, uh, he's an engineer. He's been very successful, but he hates it. He's always hated it. His dad pressured him into being an engineer to work for his oil company. And so my dad has a, a pretty strong appreciation for, doing what you love in life, you know, doing what makes you happy as opposed to just doing what will make you quote unquote successful as uh, society defines it. And, uh, 
he said go for it and actually he uh he helped me out a little bit with a little bit of money for uh, the first few months as I kind of figured out how to pay rent in uh, this kind of niche sport in the fishing industry. All right. So was there some dramatic, you had to buy the, the travel trailer. Did you already have the vehicle that you were going to pull it with? Like what kind of gear did you need and, and where were you headed? Did you drive out of Dallas on your way? No. Yeah. So the, the trailer actually came about... Let's see, about a year and a half into doing this full time. So that's that's more really? of a recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you mentioned rent, and I'm thinking, what's rent? Like you're boondocking yeah. right now. Like you don't have rent. I don't understand. Right, right. Yeah, no, the trailer's been kind of the, the recent evolution of the show. Um, so for the first year and a half, I was living in Dallas and traveling all over the country, um, picking up just any job uh, that I could find, any way to, to make money. I... Um, you know, for the first nine months, probably it was maybe a year. It was like every month, how the hell am I going to pay rent this month? Um, there were several months, like I sold a kayak one month to pay rent. I sold a couple of GoPros that really I needed for the show, but but I had enough. I, I, I sold two GoPros to pay rent one month. Um, it was it was a challenge. Uh, again, my girlfriend and I had broken up, so I just had to go find an apartment like that day. So I was stuck in a lease. But basically, I reached out to the sponsors I've been working with and told them what I wanted to do. You know, I want to, you know, you've seen what I can do when I'm just doing this, like, on my in my spare time. I want to go for this full time, but I, I need your support. And I was very fortunate that I, I developed some relationships and, and kind of proven my worth um, to a, a handful of companies that all got on board, all got behind me and uh, agreed to kind of help help fund this this next chapter. And uh Soon after the the field trips show concept was born, so the the sponsors you're nine to twelve months in, and as far as the sponsorship dollars, you don't have the trailer yet, so you don't have the signage. Is it mentioning them? Is it using their equipment in your YouTube videos and them relying on the on your subscribers and your audience to cross promote their products? Is that how is how it's all working, or are you doing videos for them? Um, at, at back then it was, it was a combination of both. So, um, in the beginning it was like, Hey, are there any product videos or promo videos or, or photography? You know, is there anything I can do for you guys that you would pay me for? Like whatever it is, I'm down. Like I, I gotta make a dollar, um, you know, give me what you got. And so that's kind of how it started. And then it slowly evolved once I, I kind of started kicking off um, the series where these, these episodes were consistent and recurring and often, um, I basically have now shifted to where I do like a retainer model. So these, uh, my main sponsors, at least they pay me a monthly retainer to just kind of promote their products and everything that I use, um, or in everything that I do. Um, so that's kind of where I've positioned myself now, which, which makes kind of budgeting and, and planning, um, much easier with a little more reliable, kind of steady income. Yeah, for sure. Cause when you're back there hawking two GoPros and you're reliant upon those GoPros to actually fund your, like that, that is counterintuitive. Right. Was there ever a point Desperate where, time. yeah, was there ever a point when you're like, and, and you mentioned something here's, here's the point you mentioned this in your, in your promo video, uh, pursue what matters titles, titled Pursue What Matters on your YouTube page that you, over the last, you, you recorded this about a year ago and it kind of encapsulates your first year. You constantly questioned if you could do this. And I got to imagine when you're handing over your two GoPros for a few hundred bucks, that's a big question mark. At any point, did you say, man, I'm out of, it's just not going to work. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, I've got a master's in finance, right? So I, I kinda, <laughs> yeah, you can do the I've math. Got a good grasp on, <laughs> on money. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was probably about six months in, like, again, my dad had helped me get started. And then, um, you know, that, that well kind of dried up and, uh, I found myself just, you know, racking up credit card debt. I was, I was behind on rent a couple of months. I had to, you know, pay a big, a big late fee, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just like getting real sick of ramen noodles. And, uh, there were definitely nights where I was sitting around like, you know, this, this was dumb. I don't know why I thought I could do this. Cause really at this time there were probably two people on the planet that I can think of that were supporting themselves solely on, with kayak fishing. And two so people, you are kidding. That's it. 
Yeah, no. Now, fishing industry as a whole, obviously, there's a lot. But, but kayak. kayak. Fishing, yeah, it's a, it's a niche sport. And, I mean, it's really been exploding the last decade. But, um, you know, back then, three years ago even, it was it was still in its infancy. And, and um, the dollars was just weren't there. And I uh, found myself thinking, like, I don't know why I thought – I would be, I could be one of the ones, um, you know, the third person to be able to do this. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I just, I thought about, you know, how kind of miserable I was in the office life. And it was like, I'd rather eat ramen and wake up every day stoked to get to work than be eating ribeyes and sitting in a cubicle all day in a suit, pretending that I don't hate my, my life. (laughs) Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Click Placement a digital agency designing Google AdWords and pay-per-click marketing strategies for startups, small businesses, and even people building a side hustle. Hit up clickplacement.com to start a conversation. If you would like to personally support the Go Hunt Life podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash go hunt life to make a donation. Your dad helped you initially with the inspiration of like, do it because he found himself in a, in a position of being pressured into doing something that he didn't want to do. But then you're a year to two years in, did you reach out to these two other people that are doing this full time for help, for mentorship, for, for inspiration, anything? Um, a little bit. Yeah, I've got, I've got, I'm, I consider both of them friends. Um, you know, and there's a couple more now. Um, like I said, the sport is growing, but yeah, I drew inspiration from them. Um, and you know, even people, people outside of kayak fishing that, uh, had made some of the leaves. I had a few friends from high school that had kind of branched out and, and gone in a, I guess, unconventional direction. And, um, you know, it's crazy this day and age, like YouTube and social media has just changed everything. It's like, if you can create content for whatever you're interested in, there are people out there that are interested in the same thing. And nowadays you can actually reach them. And so I'm a big believer that I don't care what your passion is. I always make the joke of, you know, whether it's underwater basket weaving, there are people out there that would watch your content and you could make a living doing it. And actually it was, I, I I've said that joke like a hundred times the last probably four years. And, um, one time someone called me out and was like, nobody, nobody underwater basket weaves. And we Googled it right there. And there was like, 500,000 results for underwater basket weaving. So, um, it really is true, man. I think that, uh, you know, if you're willing to work hard and, um, you know, can kind of find your niche, there's people out there interested in whatever you're interested in. Do you feel like there was one tipping point? You've got 96,000 subscribers, almost 40,000 on Instagram. You've got an audience, an engaged audience as well. Um, was there a, a, a specific tipping point that you can point to where you're like, okay, I'm on the right path and I can afford to do this. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it was really when kind of the whole concept and, and the, the, the longer term strategy evolved. I, uh, I don't really even know where I got this. I just kind of got this wild hair and said, I want to do this road trip where I want to explore the entire West Coast. I'm going to drive from Dallas to San Diego. I'm going to fish my way from San Diego to Seattle. So I got on Facebook, posted up, hey, guys. I'm going to fish the West Coast. Who wants to fish? I got like a hundred comments, um, people saying, come here, we'll do this. Come here, we'll do this. You can crash on my couch. I was blown away by not only just the invitations, but the generosity of people. I mean, not knowing me from Adam other than my videos and opening up their homes to me. And so I went on this kind of adventure. I drove 6,300 miles over 33 days. I, I filmed 14 episodes um, from San Diego up to Seattle, all different species. Every episode was something different bunch of species I'd never caught before. And I called the, this series, this 14 episode series field trips with Robert field and the reaction to it. The response, uh, was overwhelming. I mean, my views skyrocketed. People were for the first time following along every single week, um, with the series, you know, and I was, I was tying in, um, from one episode to the next. And it really just kind of brought the whole concept to life instead of these kind of just one-off video projects these one-off trips it finally became like this actual like theme you know this this show and that trip is what inspired the trailer idea because i spent 33 days i felt like i had experienced so much seen so much at the same time i knew i was just barely scratching the surface and it was like man if i could just like live on the road i could do this all the time but actually take my time you know and really kind of experience it. And so that's where field trips was born. And that's when, uh, 
I first started to realize like, you know, this could, this could be something. How long ago was that? Uh, that series came out, um, a year before this past November. So just year and a half or so. year and a half. Yeah. All right. So how do you feel when you're driving along and you're grinding it out and, but I, Fishing is one thing. You are videoing and editing and, and publishing and marketing and all of that stuff. But what kept you fueled? Was it the just the, the thought that you were building on something or was it the comments or the strangers had to have been reaching out to you like, you're keep going, man, you're inspiring me. Like what was fueling you? Yeah. Yeah. I always joke about how, you know, like I'm a, I'm a one man show. Right. And, and people people on social media, they see the the big fish pictures and the, you know, always oh, camping in this beautiful spot. But what they don't see is all the behind the, the scenes. You know, I'm the the editor, the captain, the camera guy, the angler, the host, the, you know, yada, yada marketer. Like you said, I, I have to do all that. And um, I would say it's 100 percent the response from people and the messages and the support I receive from like thousands of strangers. And I get a lot of weekly reminders that I am living the dream, as they say. And um, I'm really trying to pepper this kind of message into my my videos. You know, people say all the time, I wish I could do what you do. And my response is 100% of the time, you can. It's whether or not you will. And I really want to try to kind of get this message across that like there's nothing special about me. I've only been fishing about six years. I did not grow up fishing. I taught myself how to edit one Google search at a time. Like I'm not particularly good or experienced at any one thing that I'm doing. It's just the willingness to A, take the leap and go for it and B, work your ass off for it. And so that's been a big motivation for me. Like there's so many people that are stuck in this this roadmap for a successful life that society tells us is the way to be happy. And I just think it's so backwards. And so, um, I really want to, to kind of share that message with people and help at least a few people get out of that rut and, uh, chase what really matters in life. Are you transitioning into public speaking? No, I don't have any desire to do that, but, um, I just want to leverage my audience to, uh, to, to get that message out there that way. Now I, I've done some public speaking. I've, I've spoken at high schools and stuff like that. In fact, I, I went to this, um, kind of prep school, this really nice school in, in Fort Lauderdale area, Florida. And, uh, the, um, the Dean and president of the fishing club, these are, these are like, uh, older middle school and younger high school kids. He said, Hey, I want you to come talk to the club. Uh, I'll give you an hour. You can talk about kayak fishing or fishing in general, whatever you want to talk about. And I was like, all right, so I get there and for five minutes I talk a little bit about kayak fishing. You know, here's the the four things you need to go kayak fishing and be legal. And I was like, all right, that's it. That's all I want to talk to you guys about fishing. And I see the dean like kind of start squirming and looking all alarmed. And I was like, I want to talk to you kids about how to build a life that you're gonna love to live. And I spent the next 55 minutes just talking about like happiness and what makes you happy. And um, you know, obviously I emphasize that you know school is important, college is important. I went twice and I don't regret it. But you know, there's other ways to build a successful life than uh, this kind of predetermined roadmap that society will tell you. So yeah, I enjoy it to some degree, I guess. Is there a, one experience that you can point to, whether it's a conversation with a kid or, or a stranger or like, is there one thing over the last two to three years that you think about more than any other moment that tells you Quitting everything, not going back and getting another finance degree, but striking out on this path is absolutely the path that you should be on. Yeah, I can definitely think of one. I was up, uh, I was getting paid a, a tiny bit of money um, back in the, the early days of this to um, go up to Michigan and kind of MC or host um, some kayak fishing tournaments. So I went up there about three or four times. And the first tournament I go up there and, and we're at the captain's meeting and um, there's this young girl there. Uh, she turns out she's 10 years old. Her name was Kira Lander. She was there with her dad and she was going to be competing in the social division for this tournament. And so I thought that was super cool. You know, 10 year old girls here fishing against all grown men. She's only female, uh, let alone and the only child. And so after the cast meeting, uh, I kind of interviewed her on camera and talked to her and she just, you know, really impressed me. And uh, the tournament director and I came up with the idea that for every pro division guy that she beat on the tournament day, 
we were going to give her 10 bucks to her college fund. Well, um, turns out she actually won the social division and beat 36 wow. grown men out of 43. And, um, so fast forward. So, I mean, it was super cool. We gave her a check for a college fund. And then fast forward the next time I was there, I told the tournament director, I was like, dude, we got to go fishing with this girl. Like, I want to see if she's the real deal. You know, for all we know, her dad's like handing her fish. Like, you know, we don't know. <laughs> so let's go fishing with this girl and see what it's all about. So we go out there and I'll never forget it. It's like first few minutes. She's got this top water popper tied on. It's like summer bluebird skies. I'm telling her like, Hey, this is not, you know, you, you can throw that, sweetheart, but, like, you're probably not going to catch. Well, first cast, she sticks, like, the biggest bass that we end up catching that day and goes on to catch more bass than any of us, three grown men fishing with her. And it was just incredible. We had a great time. I did a video on it. And I got a call about a month later from this woman. She's, like, kind of crying. And um, she, it turns out it's her mom, and she was just telling me how, like, you know, Kira's like grades have gone up. She's more outgoing. She's making more friends. Like ever since this video, she's just really kind of come out of her shell and, and helped, uh, give her some confidence. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm like, I'm crying on the phone at this point. And, uh, yeah, it was just super rewarding. And, um, you know, to, it, it beat any paycheck that I've, that I've ever made for sure. Anyone, anyone speak to yourself back three years ago, when you're sitting at the cubicle, you're in doubt on what you're going to be doing. Is the, is the big paycheck going to pay off at the startup? Like if you could sit next to yourself in your office and give yourself one minute of advice or a pep talk, what would you say? I think just quite simply like F the money, the money won't make you happy. I mean, that's you know, again, like even the startup, yeah, it was in fishing and, and that was a big allure. But, you know, really underlying all that, I had dollar signs in my eyes. You know, I just thought, oh, man, I could get rich quick and then I could just go do whatever I loved. And it I guess I would just tell myself, like, man, just do what you love now. Don't wait for it. And the money will work itself out. Like if you're willing to work hard for it, the money will will come. And um Really, that's that's kind of what's happened. What do you and your dad talk about now, years down the road, when he's like, I, I, I don't blame you. Go do this. You've got to go do it. And now you're on the other side of it. So, you know, so, so to speak, you, you're on the other side of like trying to build an audience and an income. What does he tell you? Yeah, no, I mean, I tell him all the time, you know, that like if it, if it weren't for him, um, you know, I probably never would have never would have gone for it. So um, I, I have a. Uh, a great deal of gratitude to him for for being that kind of man, despite you know him being a, a successful corporate world guy. Uh, but yeah, we joke about it all the time. Um, the startup fishing rod company thing was kind of a disaster. I uh, he invested in that company uh, basically to help fund my paycheck while we got started, and um, all that money's gone, and, and he's never going to get it back. And so yeah, we just joke about it. You know, we had we had talked about it a lot, and. Um, you know, there were a lot of times where both of us thought this ain't going to work, but, uh, you know, kind of against all odds, it, it has. Here you are. What are you, we've had a little bit of a challenge on getting uh, squared away on this conversation because of your travel schedule. What are you looking at in the next six months? What are you focused on? Yeah. So, so right now I'm, I'm living in the travel trailer. As you know, I'm, I'm traveling through all 49 states that I can drive to over the next four to five years. Um, trying to catch a fish and, and do an episode, at least one in every single state. And so this year is the hardest. This year I'm, I'm running up the East Coast to Maine, um, going through each coastal state. And then I'm going to, uh, around the beginning of September, I'm going to head inland one state and kind of head back down south for winter and kind of repeat that zigzagging north-south pattern uh, as I make my way west, probably by 2022, which sounds like so far in the future, it but it's does. really not. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, this year's the hardest, you know, cause there's just so many damn States up here in the Northeast that I'm basically moving States, uh, every 10 days or so. So right now I'm in Delaware. Um, on Sunday I head to Jersey, then New York, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to fish for as many. My, my big thing is I don't, I'm not a bass fisherman or a redfish fisherman. I'm a fisherman i like catching new species more than anything and uh, i just like switching it up so um yeah just kind of blitzing my way through the northeast this summer 
trying to catch as many different kinds of fish as I as I can. Nice. You can follow Robert at yakfish.tv and also on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Yakfish TV and your YouTube channel, Yak Naggy. Uh, yeah, that's actually the old, uh, yeah. It really, you can get on YouTube and search for Field Trips with Robert Field. If you type in Field Trips, um, it'll pop up or youtube.com slash yakfishfield. Nice. All right. Robert, thank you very much for jumping on the show today. Yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate your time, and and thanks for having me. Don't forget to hit up the online printing rock stars at printdirtcheap.com and use promo code LIFEHUNTER for $10 off. Hey, Life Hunters, thank you for listening to this episode of Go Hunt Life. If you like the show and would like to support it, go to iTunes and do this. Subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and review it. It helps, and thank you. If you or someone that you know has quit their normal life to follow their dreams, I would love an introduction and maybe interview them on the show. You can find me at GoHuntLife.com and also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at GoHuntLife. Until next time, stay weird, dare greatly, and ripcord out.